Hello everyone, welcome to the series of Econometrics. This is Dr. Atman Shah. In part 7, I am going to discuss the concept of autocorrelation. So first I will discuss the meaning of autocorrelation, then examples and then sources of autocorrelation. You can find videos on other topics of econometrics on my YouTube channel. You can also find videos on SPSS, R Studio, and economics. So don't forget to subscribe the channel. Let's begin with the introduction. Suppose our regression model yi is equal to alpha plus beta x plus mu y. Now we estimate our parameters alpha and beta using OLS method. And under certain assumptions, this method gives us based linear unbiased estimator that is blue. Now, if some of the assumptions or one assumption is violated, then we are not going to get the based linear unbiased estimator. So what do we mean by autocorrelation? This assumption is associated with the error term. So assumption says that error terms of the linear regression model are independent of each other. They are uncorrelated. So suppose for any two values of x such as xi and xj, then correlation between mu i and mu j is zero. That means covariance between mu i and mu j is equal to zero. So error terms are uncorrelated. So if error terms are correlated, that means if mu i influences mu j, then we have the problem of autocorrelation. That means covariance of mu i and mu j is not equal to zero. So when two error terms in the regression model are correlated, then we have the problem of autocorrelation. Now, what are the sources? Why we have this problem? First is specification error. If an important variable is not included in the model or our functional form is wrong, then we have this kind of problem. So, for example, we are uh, studying the factors influencing housing prices. And we do not include or we omit variables like location or interest rates. And we only consider square footage and number of bedrooms. Now, in this case, if location specific factors affecting the house prices are not included in the model, then we have the problem of autocorrelation. So that is specification error, wrong specification of the model. Second is cyclical movement. Now, various time series such as GDP, price index, employment, they follow cyclical movement. So during upswing, values in time period T is obviously higher than T minus 1. And during downswing, value in time period T is lower than T minus 1. So due to this cyclical movement, we have the autocorrelation problem. So here, mu T is not independent of mu t minus 1 due to cyclical movement. Third is trend and seasonality. If the data exhibit trends or seasonal patterns which are not adequately captured by the regression model, if our variables, our specified variables follow any trends or seasonal patterns, then we can have autocorrelation problem. So for example, we are analyzing quarterly GDP data. If the regression model fails to capture underlying trends or any seasonal fluctuations, such as economic cycle or annual pattern, then residuals may show autocorrelation problem. Fourth is measurement error. So measurement errors arise due to the use of an imperfect measure of true variable. Suppose we are conducting a study to investigate the relationship between students' exam scores and their intelligence levels. So these are our, more, uh, our variables, intelligence levels and students' exam scores. Now suppose we measure intelligence through IQ test. 
So intelligence is our true variable. Now, if IQ test itself have the measurement errors, then we have the autocorrelation problem or we might have the autocorrelation problem in our model. So that shows the measurement errors arise due to the use of imperfect measure of our true variable. So our true variable is intelligence and we measure this through IQ test. But our IQ test have some measurement uh, errors. So this is the idea of autocorrelation. If you find this video useful, kindly like, share, comment and subscribe. Thank you.